Le président, correction de l'interprète. Nous observerons une pause de 10 minutes. Une pause de une minute. International Co -Prosecutor, you may resume your submission. Monsieur le coprocureur international, vous pouvez reprendre votre exposé. Your Honor, first, I think it might be helpful to explain a bit about uh, our understanding of why for three four crimes, I believe, the trial chamber did not enter convictions under joint criminal enterprise. And I cannot find my note at the moment, but I believe those were for um, exterminations, for the first and second force transfer, for political persecutions at Tout Potre, and also for enforced disappearance as to the second force transfer. To be honest, until we received the answer from the question from your honors about recharacterization, we did not understand why that happened and assumed that there had been a mistake in the closing order. But after carefully reviewing it, it's clear that the accused were all charged with all of these crimes under joint criminal enterprise pursuant to the closing order. For the closing order clearly charged that. What, what in paragraph, I believe it's 1525 of the closing order, the closing order links individual policies to individual crimes such as murder, extermination, and political persecutions. When the trial chamber severed the case, they indicated, as your honors know the history of that, that they were going to do the first and second force transfer and later adding to Potre. And they indicated that that would mean that as regards to the five policies, the implementation of only two policies would be um, would be litigated fully in the trial. La mise en œuvre and those de, two policies, I believe, were the targeting policy and the force procès. transfer policy. However, it's important to understand how the policies were dealt with in, the, in case 2-1 in the trial. While the chamber said it wouldn't go into the implementation of these other policies, and the parties could not, in different locations around the country at different times, the existence of the policies, of all five policies, was an issue litigated, and the parties were entitled to ask questions about it and litigate it throughout Case 2-1. So all five policies were the subject of Case 2-1, but the judges restricted evidence of its implementation and locations to the two policies, the targeting policy and the policy on um, force transfers to the three sets of crimes, crime scenarios, the first and second force transfer into a portrait. The, the co-prosecutors really admit that we understood throughout the trial that the JC applied to all crimes. We didn't understand that the trial chamber believed that there was some limitation on JC because of the severance order. Everything that we've seen from how the defense behaved, including their final submissions, both in writing and orally, and their questions during the case, would indicate to us that the defense also was under the impression that joint criminal enterprise applied to all of the crimes and had not caught what the trial chamber caught at some point, maybe it was when they were writing the judgment, that when certain policies only applied to certain crimes according to paragraph 1525 of the closing order. So, of course, in the civil law, and particularly in the statute of this court, it's clear that the judges, your honors, the appeal chamber has a right to recharacterize the facts, uh, uh, to give a new legal characterization to the facts found by the trial chamber in the evidence shown. It's our submission, of course, that you have to do that to make sure that the defendants had an opportunity to defend on the facts that you're, you're considering and that um, 
nothing was done to prevent them from defending on those factual findings. We submit that the defense, in fact, defended on all the factual findings that were necessary for joint criminal enterprise to also be applied to those four additional crimes that the trial chamber did not apply joint criminal enterprise to. Again, that is on the first force transfer murder uh, exterminations, on the second force transfer forced transfer, exterminations, and enforced disappearance, and for tout portray political persecution. The factual findings of the trial chamber establish all the elements of the actus reus and mens rea necessary for finding that Hussam Khan and Shia were members of a plurality of persons who had the intent that these crimes be committed and made substantial contributions to each of these crimes. The defense, in fact, did defend on all of those elements. So there would be no violation of any fair trial right of the accused for your honors to recharacterize the offense in that manner. And I'm going to move on now to just a few uh, minor closing remarks on this issue at this time, on, on different issues at this time. One is that we again heard from the defense that um, they believed that the zones were independent, and zone armies and things were happening, killing of soldiers happened differently in different zones around the country. This is something, and yesterday, yesterday afternoon, counsel said that they, were, they, they found support in the testimony of Philip Short for that proposition, the expert witness. I would like to read you an answer that Philip Short gave to a question posed by Nunchia's counsel. This is on the 8th of May 2013 at about 4.22 in the afternoon. Mr. Short said, it would Monsieur not have been possible for zone commanders to act against zones, or outside the broad policy consensus which had been laid down by the uh, center. You are not general, dealing with an army uh, that descends into banditry, which on a large scale, which takes matters into its own head and carries out massacres. You are dealing with an army which was quite small, not an enormous force, which was very rigidly controlled. So the trial chamber, we believe, found that there was a hierarchical structure where the orders of the center were carried out, and that's fully supported by the evidence. It's also fully supported by the evidence about how the killing of Khmer Republic officers and um, officials occurred throughout the country in all the zones, often with some of the same tactics such as telling people they were going to meet the king or tricks to have people identify themselves as officers or officials in order to get their old jobs back or to get rights. So the trial chamber's findings are fully supported on those points. Um, there was another question that I wanted to briefly address, which Your Honor asked yesterday. Judge Millard, asked, Justice Millard asked yesterday uh, to my colleague, and that was about the temporal scope, thank you, uh, which the defense also Alors, got into hier, in their arguments this morning about whether or not how the trial chamber dealt matin. with evidence outside the temporal scope of the charges preuve, in the closing order, the jurisdiction of the court, or the severance. Your Honor, it is a well-established principle that in order to prove a crime occurred, the mens rea, particularly the intent of persons, um, the knowledge of, of individuals that crimes will occur or substantially likely to occur, a court can and should look at evidence that shows a pattern of conduct or is probative as to intent. Clearly, for example, the fact that civilians were mistreated, that, that captured soldiers were executed, 
par exemple, les soldats capturés leaders on notice of what's likely to occur années, uh, in another evacuation guerre. of a population of a city. Pouvait, uh, Similarly, acts occurring after était, uh, an event, commis. a crime occurred, can show that in fact it was the intent of the leadership because nothing was done to discourage it and in fact commis. it was repeated, it was encouraged. Uh, so de la all de parties in this case actually throughout the trial Asked questions Toutes and were able to elicit testimony and evidence about matters outside the scope of the severance order or the jurisdiction of this court when relevant to the charges. Evidence was excluded when it was clearly irrelevant. It's, it's up to the defense, of course, in an appeal to identify any relevant evidence that they had that was excluded and identified to your honors how that could have affected the judgment. It's pretty Im it's impossible for us to respond when we don't know what they're complaining about. I mean, it's impossible for your honors to deal with it if it's not specific. The only uh, evidence that we could think of yesterday in hearing the defense make that complaint was uh, the trial chamber limited the defense questions restricted the defense in asking about a 1980s program by the then government to uh, the K-5 program to use civilian labor to build a defensive line on the border of Thailand. Defense has never shown how that was relevant to the charges in case 2-1. The single argument they made, Ou, euh, they claimed it would be relevant la, to the numbers of people that died during the DK period from the regime, as opposed to those who died, for example, on that program. The total number killed is not an essential issue Alors, in case 2-1. Pas it, uh, it may have very slight relevance to case 2-2, but for none of the crimes charged is the exact number of people that died uh, an essential element of the offense Donc, le nombre de personnes le tuer in this case. Et est un élément essentiel de l'infraction en l'espèce. Thank you, Your Honors, very much for your time. And of course, we're Merci very happy to answer any questions Your Honors have. Le temps qui m'a été accordé, et nous sommes prêts, disposés à répondre à des questions supplémentaires. President, I thank you very much. It is now time for a short break. So the Chamber will Merci, take a short break for 20 minutes, and we will resume at 11. Pour reprendre à 11 heures.